All right. Well, Bettina, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you on Wealth Edit Wednesday. And um, for those of you who are new, Wealth Edit Wednesday is our weekly meeting where we highlight an interesting woman that we've met along the way. And so we're so grateful to have met Bettina in Atlanta when we did our Atlanta launch. So she is the founder of Chloe Kristen. And uh, Bettina, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for having me. Sure. Yes, Bettina, we're so excited. And um, you actually, in talking to different women around the South about like, who should we interview and who do we need to spotlight? Your name has come up several times. So we're really excited to um, give you the opportunity to, and I'm so excited to hear the story of kind of like how you got into the fashion industry. Do you want to start there and just kind of tell us a little bit about who you are, you know, where you grew up all the way to like how you got to where you are now? Sure. Well, again, thank you for having me. And I have to say, so I met you all through um, Ashley Samuelis, um, Southern Southern Girl. And yes. her event here was like my first time venturing out after being like confined to the house for about three months. So um, when I walked into the event, I you know felt this amazing energy and you all brought together a great group of women, um, you know, to sit down and learn more about about the wealth edit. So I'm just I'm I'm happy that um, your event was one of the few that I that I've ventured out to during this time. So now here we are. Um, but as you said, I'm the um, creative director and founder of Chloe Kristen, and Chloe Kristen um, was created to basically paint a, a perfect source and backdrop for women to, to live and celebrate their stories. Um, you know, I've always been a huge believer in the power of personal branding, especially as a former, um, a woman that was in corporate America and, you know, expressing yourself through the way that you dress and making sure that you're showing up as your best um, so that you can be your best. And so um, Chloe Kristen was created to help women do just that. And where did your where did your love for fashion come from? Like, where, how did you how are you inspired to do this? So yeah, I mean, as long as I can remember, um, I've always had a creative knack and um, have loved clothes and dressing, and that was something that I bonded over with my grandmother from when I was very young um, up until now. And um, you'll see, you'll notice a lot of leopard print um, and animal prints infused in the collection. And that that is kind of a tribute and an ode to her because she loved leopard print. Um, and I do too. Um, so um, it started it started very young. Um, and I, you know, went to, so progressed through school, went to college, majored in business, um, went to business school. And even in college, I um, started to merge my love of fashion um, and entrepreneurship. So I had, a, I started like a little online boutique catering to college students um, when I was in college. And I call myself like, you know, I'm like the original girl boss because um, we used to scour, you know, Goodwill and vintage stores and list things on eBay, like find the vintage like St. John jacket or the Diane von Furstenberg, like vintage wrap dress. And then that kind of progressed into um, an online boutique before, you know, online shopping um, was really the, the preferred method of shopping. Um, and on, on spring breaks, I would take like buying trips to LA and like go to the garment district and like buy pieces to put on, um, put on my boutique. Um, and I, I stepped away from that um, after I graduated and, and, you know, really started my career and um, life led me back to it after I had my daughter and it became increasingly difficult for me to find the types of clothing that I wanted to wear to create the sophisticated wardrobe um, that I desired without paying like the designer price point. So I um, cliff jumped and, and went down the path of creating it myself and here we are. But Tina, I love hearing that because like, you know, this has clearly been a passion and a love from the early ages of your life. And I, and where do you think you got the courage to like turn it into a business? Because so many of us have things that we love, but would never like take that next step. Um, mm -hmm. I know for me, like it really took a major life event to like 
say, okay, it doesn't matter. Like I'm going to do this. I'm going to pursue this because I feel very passionate about it. Where do you, where'd you get that? Like, did your parents model that for you or was it just something you instinctually wanted to do? It was definitely an instinct for me. Um, And I do think, you know, kind of like you said, you have these like gifts and these seeds planted inside of you. And for a lot of us, it takes like being pushed off the ledge, like whether it be life events. Um, And so for me, it was a, it was a a consistent stream of like layoffs, you know, Um, you know, fault of my own and just, you know, true to a part of being in pharmaceuticals. Um, And I worked for several startups and obviously, you know, now I know for a lot of startups, the purpose is to get purchased. Um, But, you know, still as someone who was working for those companies, a constant like starting and stopping, um, it it, to me was a sign that I needed to, to pivot my career and listen to myself and what was in my heart and take those steps to, um, to building a business. And at first, you know, I didn't know what it, what it was. I think I was exploring opening a pure bar and (laughs) then didn't do that. And then this idea came and, and it was something that, um, you know, I said, I think I can run with this. Like, yes, there are other clothing lines out there and people have options, but like, there's only one Bettina and there's only one point of view and it's going to, and if I stay true to my point of view and designing from a place of authenticity, you know, no one will be able to compete with that. I'll just be competing with myself. Yeah. I love that mindset. And tell us, I mean, can you walk us through for those who are maybe aspiring to build their own clothing lines? What, uh, what were your steps? How did you, you know, even find vendors to help you and, and all those things and then marketing it and you've done such a nice job. Um, I, so I knew nothing. I went to the, I went to business school. So I did not go to design school. Um, I mean, I, you know, can sew like pillow covers or, you know, things like that. But um, I research and trial and error. I'm a, I'm a, a tinkerer. Like I like to tinker with things and figure out what works, what doesn't work. I like to learn as I go, you know, and I remember even um, after I started the business and I was like working up to transitioning full time, like I would listen to all these podcasts, like, you know, how to do this, how to do that, how to market. And I was like, you know what, this is information overload. Like you can research and listen and read what you should do that obviously, but that should not take the place of action. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I, you know, just, I was like, okay, well, what do you need to make clothes? You need a pattern. Well, how do you get patterns made? You need a pattern maker. So I found a pattern maker, wasn't the right pattern maker and what weren't the best results, but like taking that first step helped me realize like what was working, what wasn't working. And on the third try, I found my pattern maker who I still use today. Um, same thing with manufacturing we started so you know a a clothing company is um it it requires a lot of capital which i did not have um so you start small and you do what you can so we started as like make to order i think that's when that was at a time like four or five years ago was at a time where make to order was um slowly being introduced to the market and you have people that were um you know, very conscious consumers that like understood and, and they didn't mind waiting, you know, a, a few weeks for their product. So um, I started there with like sewer, like home sewers that had like industrial equipment. And then it was, it was like a couple of years until we even had inventory on hand because it's expensive. And if you make a mistake, like that can be it. So like, you know, just working with what you have and starting small. And I mean, if, if I could go back, like I would have, I would have started even smaller. Like I would have probably had like two styles, you know, (laughs) as opposed to six. So um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with just like learning as you go, because one thing I've realized is that you, like, you never have it figured out. Like just when you think you have it figured out, you're going to have to pivot again or make changes to your systems and processes. So yeah, that's a good word. Are you kind of unmute myself? I apologize. I'm 
filming from home today <laughs> with my kids here. But you know, I what I love to hear you say, and um, actually I got this comment um, last night from the event, it's like how important it is for women to hear your story and to see like how you were, you constantly kind of pivoted as each, you know, circumstance presented itself. So you're like, you know, I've gotten laid off from this job. Okay. What do I want to do? Like, and then following it and like realizing that oftentimes though, sometimes like getting down a road that we realize that we don't want to do is just as important as, you know, finding it, finding the one that we want to, like how important that is and like how we want, you know, women to hear that it's okay to try things and it not work Mm -hmm. and then pivot and try again. And then like how each one of those steps, you're learning something along the way that's very valuable, but then it's also like causing you to like, once you get find that thing that you love, you're, you're like passionate about it. You're excited about it. You've like, I've tried all these other things Mm -hmm. and like how, I guess what I see in your product and when I hear you talk is just the authenticity of it, you know, like you're like, I've tried all these other things and now I'm here and I'm just taking it as it comes. And um, you and I had a conversation before this call about um, kind of your word for 2021. I'd love for you to share that with our listeners. Yeah. So I was um, just like processing the week maybe week before last and and I went like I, I actually grabbed a new a new journal I'm like this is my 2021 notebook um, <laughs> but um the word that came to me was intention um because I was on a, a call with some women and they were talking about like goal setting and vision boards and things and I was like well we we tried that already and then like 2020 just kind of went off the rails <laughs> so like <laughs> So like, for me, I think what um, helped my mind frame and like helped me continue to run the business and kind of be calm was like uh, intention. So it came back to me that like my word for 2021 is intention. I think, you know, we can set goals um, and we can make plans and we get too attached to the way that we think it's supposed to go. So when something outside of us happens, it's really difficult for us to adapt to those changes. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you have, if you're if you're operating from a place of intention, like how you realize how it happens is really none of your business. Mm-hmm. So that is my word for 2021 is to is to have the intention um, of like why you're doing what you're doing. You know, so like, as opposed to saying this month, I want to generate, you know, $10,000, like maybe I just say this month, I want to serve 10 women and I want to help them feel more confident. Like as they're working from home, I want to help them, you know, make it easy for them to get dressed in the morning, as opposed to focusing on that number and like, this is exactly what I have to do to get here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously there's some of that that goes into it. I mean, as a business person, you kind of, you have to have those strategic plans, but more so making the intention, the, the forefront. And I had a conversation, you know, with even my sales directors, I'm like, let's hire from a place of intention. Like, let's really listen to why someone is saying they want to work with Chloe Kristen. What's the intention? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I'm hoping that we as a company can even design some programming around that for 2021 to kind of get other women like in that place of operating from intention as well. That is, I just love that so much. And that um, it's such a good spin on, on such a hard year too, because it's a, it's a word with a lot of depth and a uh, uh, it really does translate into um, company culture in some ways, I think. It's such a good word for that. And you mentioned in our pre-call that you had, 2020, you learned a lot about yourself, but you also learned a lot about your team. So tell us kind of how you've navigated, built a team in 2020 and 
you know, what, what lessons you've learned that you can share with us? Yeah, so I piloted um, a direct sales model program pretty much by myself um, in 2019. Well, part of 2018 and 2019, because I figured as a new brand who, you know, we don't have like this huge marketing budget to run like ads, like, you know, over and over again. And people, women, especially at our price point, tend to want to like touch, see and feel and learn about the brand. And um, so in order to lay like a healthy foundation for us, I wanted to pilot a direct sales program. And that just came from my experience being in sales and understanding that relationships really do carry a lot of weight. And um, that's a great way to get Chloe Kristen in front of our target market. So um, I piloted it, saw that it worked, and then I wanted to expand the, the team. And um, that was my intention for 2020. Um, that was something that I wanted to focus on. And I think to my benefit, people who like I'd reach out to people before and everybody was just so busy like I wouldn't hear back from people um but everybody was at home and just kind of like wondering you know what's next and um you know I was able to get people's attention and so it just started with one person who's now one of my sales directors and led to another person getting in front of them explaining to them like my story my mission the story behind the line um, and just kind of making it clear to them, like, hey, fashion is changing, like gone are the days where, you know, you've got these 500 style collections, it's wasteful, it's not profitable, like, this is what we're doing now, like, this is where it's headed, and I want to be on the forefront of that. So um, got their buy-in, and then they recruited women to um, form the sales team that we have. So we've got, I think, 23 brand stylist so like you know going from three to 23 has been a huge shift and you know a huge um level of scaling for us and so I've had to learn a lot about like you know how to lead and what is needed for me to you know lead the scaling of this business and um, what my team needs from me and you know putting processes and systems in place and what works and what doesn't work and even personally learning like how to um, create some balance in my personal life <laughs> so so one of the things that I've done is like I've, I've taken my work email off of my cell phone you know and I'm like the first day I did that, I'm like, okay, like the world didn't end, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, um, and just, you know, setting aside time to shut it down, like realizing that I need adequate rest. Um, so, I mean, the lessons are endless. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to like implementing those and, you know, those lessons in 2021 and um, continuing to learn and evolve as a leader. Yeah. I it's love hearing that. And, um, we actually have somebody in the office, in our office that does that, like his work email is not on his phone. And I think that's so fascinating. When he first told me that, I was like, you can do that. Like that's why. Wow. Um, but you know what I love about uh, hearing some of the things that you're saying too, is that you are, as a leader, you're also taking into consideration, like, like if, if, even if you personally are great at pivoting and moving fast and doing that, you have to consider like, what your team, how your team is going to respond to that. And, and um, I just love hearing that because it's so important as a good leader to be able to consider not only your own needs, but the needs of your team and how they can adapt to your new ideas, which fits very nicely into the intentional conversation as well. Um, so one of the things that I, I've loved hearing you talk about is um, the transition you made with your line and how quickly you did it. I'd love for you to share about that for oh 2020. My, oh my Lord. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so we, so typically, you know, like if you're, you design almost a year in advance. So like fall, winter 20 was designed. I started to design fall, winter 20, like in October of 2019. And then like samples will be done, you know, by January and then you'll do your photo shoot and your lookbooks and everything because you go to market. If you're, if you're wholesaling, 
you show your collection to buyers in February. So um, that was what we did. And I was really happy with the collection, excited about it. Like we went to New York and went to market. Um, I was kind of like dabbling in. I was like, well, maybe I'll do, start a, a sweater collection or sweater category, but I'm not sure. Let's see how many orders we get. So obviously pandemic um, happens and um, I have the sales team now, which came together like at the end of July, early August and fall is set to launch September, like second week of September. And so, you know, we're like, I don't think that we need the jacquard and the brocade like A-line dresses or like the lace dresses. Probably should take that out. And, you know, maybe we don't need, you know, all the sheath dresses, we can have it in there, but we really need something. I was like, I want to give my team something that they can actually sell. Like I want to set them up for success. So we decided that the cashmere, like the sweater category was going to be kind of the way to do that. But we only had, you know, five weeks. So five weeks to basically design and launch a new category and then also create these sample sets for the teams that to travel around the country for each woman to, each stylist to be able to sell from so i mean within a matter of five weeks we launched a new category at the cashmere um has i want to say about 30 probably about 24 SKUs. um and then we um had to do all the samples so I mean, pretty much everything was almost everything was on time and like cashmere is overseas. So <laughs> we had to navigate that. Um, and so it, it was something that like needed to be done. And I'm proud that I, you know, that I was able to do that, but it's something that like, I won't do again for a while. <laughs> so, but it's also one of those things where I probably would have like dragged my feet if I wouldn't have been forced to do it, you know? So I'm, I'm glad we did it. I'm glad it's done. Um, but yeah, we're definitely on like a new trajectory <laughs> moving forward with lead time. So <laughs> Lauren, well, that kind of reminds us of me of wealth at it and being online. <laughs> oh, I know. We're like, and we're online. <laughs> yes. but we are now we're an online platform um so anyway yeah it's very much like what we went through uh and Bettina I think your cashmere line I mean what one of my favorite things about your line from seeing it in person and it really is worth I know we're in the middle of a pandemic and it's hard um we don't know whether to get together or not or in what group, size group or not and um but if you can see Bettina's clothes you will fall in love with them they're beautiful the textures and particularly I love the cashmere line that sweater you have on right now is like next on my list it's so good and I love the little yeah, I do have on a shirt I wish y'all could see it through zoom I mean like the attention to detail and the quality of it is amazing and yes I am in quarantine with my family and I have on a a lovely top that I could wear to a cocktail party because there you go. Wearing. You can be your your Zoom cocktail ready. That's right. I'm gonna wear it all day. Um, so, and Bettina, you know that kind of leads me to because your your clothes really are of tremendous quality. They're beautiful. I mean, the moment you feel them, the fabrics are like the right weight, the right feel, the cut of them. You can the detail wow. on each piece is just like spot on, and um, like. One of, you know, we talk about women and negotiating for themselves and like thinking through like charging what we're worth. And I'm sure the same like thought process is like when you're selling a product. Has that been hard? Like the, the process of figuring out how much to charge for each piece because they really are exquisite mm -hmm. and above average. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, at the beginning, I had a hard time with that, you know, cause you kind of have like where you want to be. Um, and then like, I had to realize, okay, first of all, we're making, we're manufacturing in America. Like, so that's going to be a little bit more. Um, and then just thinking about like the time and the effort that was like, you know, going into the clothing. I mean, the, pr the price points, like anything, it's not arbitrary, like, you know, so kind of taking the emotion out of it. Like it's, this is a spreadsheet that's costing and you know, you have to value even, I think your time as a business owner that goes into 
you know, manufacturing or designing clothing. I mean, even there's a level of like the creativity is kind of like my intellectual property. And, you know, it's like if everybody, if every, like, it's like if a piece of art or somebody's like, oh, why is that $10,000? Like I could have done that. Well, but you didn't. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I, you know, I kind of started, so take the emotion out of it and look at it like that. And just even looking at some of the other things that were on the market that, you know, to your point, comparing like the quality and like the work, the attention to detail that goes into the clothing um, and realizing that, you know, Chloe Kristen, and I don't think any brand should be like, the, the goal isn't to be everything to everyone. And you find the people that really appreciate like the, the work and time, the attention to detail that goes into your clothing. And those are the people that will support you. and. You know, if you can't find anybody, I mean, obviously, I think that you have to look at yourself, but <laughs> once you put it out there, if you're able to um, get some traction in the market, I think, you know, that validates, um, you know, the price points and the, mm -hmm. the work that you're putting into the into the clothing. And so, you know, I think also like women, we talked about on our call, we have a hard time like asking for what we know we're worth sometimes like even if you're a service-based business or even if you're putting a product out there whereas a man you know it's like it could be an arbitrary you know thousand dollars and <laughs> it's like well that's just what it's worth and you know so I think that um it's definitely been a lesson for me to become like more comfortable and just really asking what I know our product is worth mm -hmm. Yeah, we had, it was so funny last night, we had a little event here in Birmingham and uh, we interviewed an artist and she, her name's Sally. And she said, oh, before I became an artist, I'd look at art and I'd be like, oh, I could do that. You know? And she's like, there's so much more that goes into it than you'll ne you'll just never know. And she said, I wish I could eat my words on all of that because it's, there's so much just attention to detail, like Emily's saying, especially in these, you know, lines that are not, you know, nothing wrong with the gap. I love the gap, but it's, it's a different kind of experience um, when you're wearing a piece from Chloe Kristen. So um, our last question to you, we ask this to everybody. We appreciate it. The Wealth Edit is a community where women talk about money and we think it's important for women to do this. 90% uh, of us will end up as the financial head of household at some point in our, in our lives. So this community, we're just trying to teach everybody up. So we appreciate you saying yes. And we're wondering why you said yes to the wealth edit. Yeah. I mean, so especially as a woman being raised in the South, like, you know, we're taught, like, you don't talk about money and that's taboo. Um, and I do, I mean, women, you know, we have the, we have a, a wage gap, obviously in this country. And, um, you know, even between demographics, like, you know, white women versus Asian women versus black women, and what we're paid and compensated or what we even think we should ask for. And really the only way to, to, to close that gap and to educate yourselves is to, um, is to talk to one another and have those mm -hmm. conversations that have been ingrained in us as being taboo. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something I think, I mean, I, men talk about it way more than, than, than we do. Um, so I, I definitely saw value in what you were offering and creating that space where women could have those conversations um, and learn about our finances and building wealth and um, learning from from you and and different strategies from one another. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you so much, and we will. Um, we are going to have Bettina in our office tomorrow. So if you are in Birmingham and want to stop by, she'll be here from ten to two ish. Ten to four. Four. Ooh, even better. Um, so we're so excited that she's going to be here with us and really to touch and feel her clothing as an experience. So we're, um, we're very excited to have you with us in the office tomorrow. And thank you for coming on today. Oh, no. thank, thank you. Regina. I'm to see you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks. Have a great day. You Bye too. guys.